woman fell and hit her head on uh, concrete. Go ahead. You guys are losing. Oh, thank you. We appreciate it. You take care. What does 9-11 symbolize to you? I'm from New York originally. Got my start in the fire service up there. That's the cliche I gotta ask. Has a baby ever been left at the station? Yeah. How many times at night do you get waking up? Welcome back to the Ride Around Show, y'all. Today we'll be interviewing a firefighter and following a crew on some day in the life activities in this 9-11 feature. We'll be seeing how they set up for a shift and going on some calls like the one we just got right now. So you guys are coming from Station 1. Yeah. Is that the biggest station in Fayetteville? So Station 1's, uh, it used to be called uh, Central Fire Station. I think it is the oldest. Uh, that and Station 2 right on campus. Um, but yeah, there's there's nine stations total. And you said today there's three trucks offline? So right now they've got a couple units out of pocket. They're going down to our training facility and they're going to do like mock drills and stuff. So it's up to the other units like us to kind of spread over and, and cover. It's going to be active day. <laughs> yeah. Thank you to University Auto for supporting first responders and sponsoring us to do this ride along episode. They're my personal mechanic and they're located close to campus just like this fire station. All right, y'all, this is the crew we're gonna be rolling with. I gotta start with Higby, the station Dalmatian. Then we have Marty Streifler, firefighter. Bryce Housley, driver operator. Tony Gage, captain. All right, let's roll, y'all. Let's do it. The rescue's over here. That's the truck we're on. Let's Big go. rolling toolbox. It's look at it. Yeah, right here. I'll pop this. Uh, everybody has always asked what this is. This is, uh, it's an exhaust hookup right here. We used to have, uh, they, they used to have the trucks just running in the bay with, with nothing to basically suck all the bad stuff out. So the, Y'all in here also, passing out? Yes, yeah, so <laughs> everything. So now we've got good, you know. Um, this is like anything to do with like uh, auto extrication and stuff. So we have, uh, you know, car wrecks, stuff like that where we need to cut some, some beefy metal. We've got spreaders or the jaws of life right here. We've got cutters and then we even have rams too that can basically just telescope out. We've got two ladders to kind of run the full length of the truck so we can grab those if we need them. How much water does this truck hold? So this truck right here, uh, it has an internal tank of 500 gallons. 500 gallons. Yep. So, is that average size? <laughs> yeah, the majority of the trucks uh, have 500 gallons and then we have like uh, a tanker that's that's rolling with a little more. The helmet up here that we've got on the side of the truck, it's pretty cool. It's got a 343 and that's kind of a, a nod to uh, the, the firefighters that lost their lives on uh, September 11th. Station tour. <laughs> On the other side, we got like a specialty truck that's uh, for hazmat call calls and stuff. So when we get to shift in the morning, uh, everybody kind of comes in here. This is uh, this is our, our gear area. So everybody's got a, a hook and a spot for their helmet and all their equipment and and all that stuff. So it smells like barbecue. <laughs> you guys eat 
at here cooking most of the time or do you have time to go grab barbecue? Yeah, we so most we do a lot of our meals, uh, which I can show you guys upstairs. Yeah. We're a big family up here. We're here for, for two full days, you know, 48 hours through. So, I mean, eating, cleaning, working out, you know, a lot of, uh, a lot of time spent together. So, we're, we got like our, our little tribe, we call it. All right. And this is kind of, uh, so this is more of the living quarters up here. Throughout the years, we've got our uh, captain's office over here. Looks like a training room. Yep, we got a training room back here. <clears throat> Some okay. more chief's offices down here. We got to call this light will kick on right here. It's got a little override on it, but. Who's the best cook? Best cook? Everybody's kind of got like a staple, a staple meal. So yeah, it's it's all you can see. This is one of our older stations, so it's all an open floor plan. We all, everybody's, everybody's throughout the bedroom, and then um, we get a call. All the lights will be, you know, we we call oh, the lights man, here these? at ten, and then yeah, we got spotlights up here. So if we get a call, basically, they'll uh, they'll definitely come on and, and blast you with some some light in the middle of the night. So that's a crazy way to wake up. Yeah. So we've got over here is our. Uh, our fire pole. We, funny story about this is uh, some, somewhere along the way they figured out one of the guys was, was sleepwalking and he didn't know he was a sleepwalker or, or so the story goes. <laughs> so they put this in because uh, you know obviously they didn't want him. That's another call right now. So yeah, we got this. Yeah, you want to go down that? <laughs> I'm gonna be honest. I discovered a fear of heights. I will meet y'all down there. Let's go, let's go. So yeah, y'all, we're gonna be working between calls. It's a motor vehicle accident. Cops are getting the story of who hit who. Firefighters are trying to make sure nobody's hurt from who hit who. She got hit about 40 miles an hour, so airbags. Basically, they're loading her up now, and uh, they're going to get some records out here, but there's enough cops, so hopefully we'll get cut loose. So that's kind of where we're at. I was hearing the call come in. I'm like, do you guys ever hear like streets you know, and you're like, oh, I hope that's not. Yeah, like a frequent flyer or something. Yeah, we have we have a few of those for sure. We know we're probably gonna we're probably gonna go to that location while we're on shift. It's kind of this unique bond we develop with these. A little you sense know. of community. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I notice uh, everybody seems to have a different role when you respond. Here, where I'm at in the back seat, I'm uh, the firefighter, the labor at disposal. So uh, our captain up front, he's uh, he's got the computer, he's got all the information going to the call. He's kind of our quarterback, making uh, calling all the shots. Bryce, uh, or our driver, he's uh, he's getting us to the call, and then like anything that we need off the trucks, you know, head head the wreck we were on just now, uh, head we'd had to cut or spread or use the jaws of life. He's gonna get that all set up for us. Well, uh, well, we're kind of doing our thing and, and getting the other initial stuff done. So, man, I was sitting there thinking, I'm like, I'm living every little boy's dream right now. <laughs> We jump right into it. Yeah, you're, you you brought the heat with you this morning. <laughs> Has a baby that you know of ever been left at a station in Northwest Arkansas? Siloam Springs has got, they have a call it a baby box and at, at their station and it's it's a spot for, you know, uh, you know, that a child can safely, safely be surrendered and, you know, it's not in a bad situation, so. We have, uh, we got a lot of uh, <laughs> pets that come and get surrendered. Oh, um, man. Or, or people show up to the station, they found this cat or dog or, or, you know, bird. But, you know, our stations are all safe havens. You know, you can come and uh, if you're in a situation that uh, you don't need to be, our doors are always open and we can always kind of invite you in and keep you safe, so. My heart's still beating, man. <laughs> like, well, all right, we're back from a call. So how do you yeah. guys, how are your shifts set up? Each shift works a 48 hour uh, period. So wow. um, we just came on today. We're here for, for two. Day 20, straight? Yes. Yep, you don't leave the hours. station? 
we're here. We're here. So uh, there's uh, different schedules throughout, you know, the, wow. the country. We're on a 4896. A lot of the departments in the area are. So what's the first thing you usually do when you set up for a shift? So we get the shift. We get our, our gear on the truck. Get the truck check, and then uh, next biggest thing is, uh, you know, we'll go and get our groceries uh, for Ooh. the next, you know, two days. We gotta get to the store and get our groceries. So okay. I thought that was another call coming in. No, 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 you're good. All right. Fine. Can we tag along with you, go get some groceries? Yeah, come, let's do it. Let's hit the store. All right, let's do it. We're going headsets off, gang, all right? Right around to the grocery store. I yep. like it. Theoretically, could you spray water while driving? So this this truck right here does, it has a, they call it pump and roll. So yeah, they could, they could spray off this, but uh, it's not, not common, <laughs> common funny. practice. So do you guys, would you say half of your calls are campus and half are city or what would that ratio? Cause we're driving past. Yeah, we just, we just went past station two. Station two, like they're, they're in the heart of campus. You know, the majority of their calls are going to be this corridor, like anything, you know, involving uh, the U of A engine twos, engine two is going to pop that call. Uh, we're kind of on the, uh, the other side of campus. So Dixon street, Dixon keeps us busy, yeah, especially during the school year. What game day. I mean, we're, we're hitting Dixon too, but for a different reason. You yeah. just keep you just keep the truck on Dixon ever? Just yeah. we we've, we've had a few nights where like going back to the station, it's just the revolving door. So we've had a few where we've just posted up down there. We're like, bar is closed in an hour. We're just gonna keep rolling. So what happens like if you're in a, in the shower and you get a call like that? It's just so you're 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 trying to get as dried off the best you can, and then you know you don't want to slide the pole because you're gonna absolutely burn your burn your skin going down i had a shift where it was like i was we got popped for a call while i was in the shower come back i go to get back in the shower we get popped for another one i think it was like a total of three times i was like at the end i was like no i'm i'm taking the shower it will happen <laughs> it's the nature of the nature of the job sweet 110 fever you don't have to run sirens for this thing? No. No, it's a quiet one, I think. What's going on over the wall over here? Medical. Like, all right, call number six done of the day. Now we're going to get groceries. Yeah, we run any more with you. We're going to have to get you an application, man. Holy crap. Well, I was going to ask you what happens if you get a call while we're grocery shopping, but <laughs> I think we saw. Yeah, that happens a bunch. We'll get be in the middle of the store pushing our cart around and then calls go all out and okay oh. <laughs> got to dish the cart I'll get the tortillas No, 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 no. It's, it's a common, uh, it's a common misconception. People think they're like, oh, we're swiping the, the city party card now. Every, everything we, uh, we basically, everybody pulls money together. We get what we need. So, so we're, uh, we're all business when we get here. We're just doing breakfast. Is that like, 48 hours worth? No. So we're doing mac and cheese. Go ahead. You guys are good. Oh. Thank you, we appreciate it. Take care. Thank you. We're big self checkout people. Sweet. Yeah. How many calls a day would you say y'all get? Tempo driven, depending on like what time of the year it is or schools in or out. Uh, I mean, I'd say city-wise, we average, you know, 30 to 40 calls a shift, sometimes more than that. When you respond to most dorm calls or campus calls, what's the what's the typical call? We get a lot of burned food. We'll get a lot of like uh, automatic alarms and it's one of those we still have to, you know. Still gotta suit up? <laughs> suit up, treat everything like it's, uh, it's the real deal. Is there something you know as a firefighter that might surprise the average city resident? Uh, we actually have a lot of guys with like a, a whole spread of degrees. Everything from like kinesiology to, uh, you know, we, we've got mechanical engineering. We've got a ton of people on our roster. And, and I think the coolest thing for me is like we have uh, guys uh, on the job with the schedule we, we work right now that are actually going to school, you know, at the U of A or other places. 
the infamous Dixon Street. <laughs> yes, yes. So like uh, Station One, they used to call uh, the Midnight Express because it's you know the bulk of the call volume was you know at nighttime, mostly around the Dixon area. So uh, yeah, that used to be the old logo at Station One, the Midnight Express. The Midnight it was, Express. Yeah. Can you ever sleep? A full night. We've had nights where it's just slow, uh, or, or you know, everything's kind of a lull. Um, and then there's been other nights that we're just going nonstop. So I know that one of the big complaints I've heard about the, the job is sleep deprivation. Sleep schedule is crazy. Yes. Yeah. There's. We've got a couple trucks that are uh, are crazy busy. Uh, those guys are. Those guys are up all night just running, uh, running their tails off. So they look like like day two. They look like zombies. Everybody's <laughs> drinking coffee and riding the crazy train. How often do the trucks need to be serviced? The drivers, when they go on, when they come on shift, they do a full comprehensive truck check uh, each shift. So they'll basically, you know, put the pump in gear, check all the fuel levels, oil levels, all that stuff. So yeah. Well, I was gonna say University Auto is my mechanic, but I doubt they service. <laughs> I doubt they service fire trucks. Yeah. Is the rivalry between cops and firefighters real? We have our little, uh, you know, jabs between agencies that we like to take, but no, we we, we really do. We've got a good working relationship with him. What made you want to be a firefighter? I'm from New York originally. Uh, I got my start in the fire service up there volunteering. Uh, when I was 16, you can uh, you can start doing like a uh, junior volunteer thing up there. So that's kind of where I got exposed to it. And uh, I've, I've been hooked ever since. Uh, I went into the military and I was getting out. I still had that like uh, part of me where I was like, I want to help people. I want to, I want to uh, you know, I want to serve and, and, and be there for people. So just today we've had a, the car accident. Somebody yeah. tripped at the courthouse. Uh, I think you said a seizure. I mean, yeah. it's all over the place. Yeah, man. You'll notice that we got a lot of veterans on the job uh, because it is. It's it's the closest thing we can get to, uh, you know, something similar to the military where you're still serving and performing, and it's uh, it's it's really uh, it's fulfilling. So, man, being from New York, this is a 9/11 episode feature. What does 9/11 symbolize to you? Where I was living in New York, uh, it impacted not not just uh, firefighters, but families so that was that was something that really left its mark on me um, and yeah that that's a driving factor of for sure of, of why I'm here today and the fact that I'm able to put on the uniform and do what I do is uh, it's extremely rewarding for me and I, I don't take that lightly it's an absolute honor and a privilege to to be here and sitting in this seat and doing what I do man I know I'd have a new respect and I'm assuming the audience does Going on on these calls, I see how much really, it's, the, it's an on-call job. Yeah. It's pretty cool, so I, I appreciate your service and I thank y'all for coming on, riding around with us. Yeah, we, we appreciate the support, we really do. I done stood up in that water with all kind of divers. I done made it out that fire like a firefighter.